Welcome to the post-stack inversion video using HRS9. In this video I'll do post-stack inversion on a data set and I've already started the HRS9. When it starts it looks like what you see on the screen right now. There's a series of previously opened projects. There's also some other tabs. For example, I can go to the settings tab and modify various aspects of the program. I won't do that now. I'll actually get into the project. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new project and I'm set up to start in the uh, correct project data area, so I'll just call it guide. Okay. The program asked me what GeoView database it would like to use. The database is the place where we store all the well information. By default, it wants to create a, a database with the same name in the same location as the project. For example, I've called this guide.prj, so we would like to set up a database called guide.wdb. Alternatively, I can specify an existing database, which I'll do. I'll open an existing and read in what's called the Blackfoot database, which is a GeoView database that's already been set up uh, previously to save time. So I say OK on that, and the data is read in. Now the GeoView window changes as you see on the screen here. Uh, there's two big areas. There's the project manager with its own set of tabs, and then there's the data area shown to the right. I'll come to the data area in a moment. Right now, the project data is uh, down the left-hand side. We have another set of tabs. For example, this is the well data, the seismic data. There's nothing in it. The horizon data, nothing there as well. I've got only a series of wells. Each of the wells, there's a little plus sign. So, for example, if I click on the plus sign next to the well 516, we can see the curves that are listed. We can also see the wells listed in another more classic way. If I go to the right and click the Data Explorer tab, the Data Explorer tab produces something that looks a lot like the conventional or the traditional GeoView look. Here's the series of whales shown down here. If I choose one of them and uh, uh, click on the arrow, I see the curves that are listed, and I can see the uh, actual digits associated, and I can edit any of these values as well. To the right, there's a base map showing all the, the well locations, and I also have something called the single well display, which shows a quick look at the curves that are in my database that are associated with that particular well. And finally, the more complete way to see a well is to go back to it and double click the icon and that brings up the traditional e-log type window where we have the uh, well curves displayed. And I have complete control over that. If I go to the eyeball icon, I have all the controls over everything that's displayed there. I also have a lot of right click control. So for example, I can right click, I can uh, right click on this and add a curve. So for example by name I could add the density curve in and now we've got the density and the sonic log at the same time. I can also click here and see immediate control over the scales and um, uh, the location of the, of the curves and I can add a, a track if I want to. If I right click in the middle and add a track we get a new one and I can drop and drag and drop a curve from the list into that. So I have complete control of the display. So that's the uh, well data. What about the seismic data? Well, I don't have any seismic data appearing if I go to my tab. So now it's time to import some seismic. So I import from a segwi file. Uh, the seismic data is called blackfoot.segwi. This next part is very similar to our CE8 version. It's 3D geometry. We are specifying that there are inline crossline numbers but no XY coordinates in the header. Uh, here we can specify all kinds of uh, information about the byte locations of the various parameters that are required. If I need to look at the header, I have the header, e header editor window and I can see complete information that way. So we'll say OK, on, we'll say next on that and this uh, starts the scanning process and we get a picture of the geometry, which we OK. Yes, it looks good. And uh, what comes up now, actually off the screen, is the well map table menu indicating the mapping of each of the wells in the inline cross line. All of this is correct, so we say OK. So now we have our seismic data. We're seeing a particular inline. We can step to another one, for example, this way. We can see cross line displays. And very conveniently, I can go to a highlight this icon and go to a particular well location and quickly skip to it. I can modify aspects of the uh, well very quickly by right-clicking. For example, I can turn the color on. If I 
quant, and I can go here and modify the color scheme, modify the range, and so on. But we'll leave the color uh, manipulations for later when we have a different data set. So we're, we're back to our seismic. We don't quite have all of our data for inversion yet, so we have the wells, we have the seismic, we don't have any horizons. Let's import some horizons. So we import from a file. Uh, we, it's called blackfoothorizons.txt, and we go next, and we can fill in the information. Let's have a look at the file, and we see for, that there are, in fact, two horizons to import. There's four lines to skip, and the inline and cross line are in columns one and two, and then the horizons are in three and four. Okay. So the horizons are read in. We see them located here. We also can go, you also notice that they now appear in the horizons list, and if we double click one of these, we get a plot of the horizon appearing in the maps tab. So there's the seismic tab, the maps tab, the wells tab. So we've get, now got all of our data and we're ready to do the inversion. Now we go back to the project manager and we've got all the project data. Now let's have a look at the processes tab. The processes tab is the set of all processes that are available. In fact, this is all processes within the entire Hampson Russell suite. For example, seismic processing processes, utilities, and uh, strata model building. Uh, all of our processes are located in one place. The classic way would be to apply them one by one. But we're going to do something different for this demo. We're going to go to the Workflows tab. And the Workflows tab is a set of suggested steps to do a process. So for example, there's the AVO modeling workflow, which has a series of steps. There's the AVO attribute analysis, post stack inversion. These are the steps that the program suggests you follow to do the inversion. So let's follow them. Right now they're colored red because we haven't specified any parameters yet. So we'll do them one by one. So we select post stack in seismic. Uh, there's, this is a list of all the seismic volumes so far in the project. There's only one, so we will select that, of course. Then select horizons. This is the horizons that will be used to build the initial model. There's two of them. We will select both of them. Uh, we will extract a statistical wavelet, which means we are extracting a wavelet using the seismic alone. By default, it wants to use the entire volume, but let's just use the single cross line that is visible on the screen right now. And let's set a time window from 500 to 1300 milliseconds. We notice uh, that there's very few parameters because this is, we've encapsulated, we've organized all the most critical parameters on the first page. In fact, we've hidden the advanced options. If I click that button, we can see that there are various advanced features that are available, but very often it's only the basic that's required. So we'll do this process. It extracts the wavelet, and by default it is floating around in front of the screen. If I click this wavelet's icon, it, I, it gets dropped into the wavelet's tab. So we have the wavelets, the map, and the seismic. So we've gone through the first three steps. We now need to select the wells to be used in model building. By default it will use them all. Yes, that's good. It reminds us uh, the well, which wells are being used by bringing up the wells tab. And the next step is correlate the wells. Correlate the wells means uh, fine-tune the depth time curve so that uh, the lineup is optimum. Let's pick a particular well, 0808. OK. And it is going to extract a composite trace and correlate with a specific volume, namely the Blackfoot seismic volume. And we click OK, and we get the window shown here. So here's the log correlation window. What we see is, in blue, the synthetic traces with the default wavelet so far. In red, the composite trace. To the right is the seismic data. We, sometimes we need to create a little more space on the screen. So if I get rid of the project manager for now, I can actually bring it back any time, but I'll get rid of it for now and create more space. To the right, we have the cross-correlation plot. And we see a bit of a shift. So for example, it says uh, that there's a 6 millisecond shift. Let's apply it. It gets a little bit better. We could, for example, let's do a, a, a big stretch that's not right, but I click that point, click this point here. Now it shows some diagnostics showing you what has happened to the data. And if I do stretch, it will stretch the curves that way. That's really not right, so I will do undo stretch and go back. 
I notice from my cross correlation window that there's a bit of a phase shift, so this is now a good time to extract a new wavelet. So we'll extract a wavelet using the wells. Um, from the Blackfoot seismic, let's use all the wells and run. And the wavelet that comes out looks like this. Let's put it back in its wavelets tab. And if I go to back to the wells page, I see that we've got a very good cross correlation. Still a bit of a shift. Let's apply that last shift and we're done. So we say OK and it creates a new sonic log called P Wave Core 1 and we're finished the log correlation step. Now it's time to bring back the project manager and we have three more steps to do. Build the initial model. By default it will build a post stack model using all the wells and all the horizons that we've chosen. I run that. And the model appears. So the, the, the wiggle traces are the seismic data. The model appears back in color. I can right click and turn off the seismic trace to see the model a little clearer. Now we're ready to do inversion analysis. Um, the, all the parameters default to use the wells and so use the existing strata model. It's OK on that. And we get the uh, inversion analysis. The inversion analysis, once again, I can make more space by getting rid of the project manager. The inversion analysis shows the inverted trace in red overlying the original well log in blue. The red traces are synthetic, calculated from the inversion trace. The black traces are the average trace around the well location. By clicking this button, I step from well to well, and I can QC how well I'm doing. I can also uh, change parameters. So for example, the eyeball allows me to change everything that has to do with the display, the wavelet changes the wavelet. I can set model parameters uh, and, and modify them. Let's just change one of the inversion parameters. So for example, right now we're using model-based. Let's try what would happen if we use linear programming sparse spike and set the scalars to apply a single global scalar. So we do apply and we see the inversion change. Uh, we can go back. Let's change that back to model-based. Apply and we're back to the model-based result. So we can experiment with the inversion parameters very quickly here. Let's close that. Come back to our project manager. We're almost finished. We will apply it to the volume and it's going to use the Blackfoot seismic. Instead of the whole volume, just to save time, I'll apply to the single cross line that I'm looking at. Cross line 42. All the parameters are remembered from before and I run it. And when it's finished, it splits the screen into two pieces, as we see here. On the left is the input seismic with the initial model. On the right is the inversion, shown here. It might be handy to have three screens, for example, uh, to show the input seismic separately. So I'll just click the number three down here, and it creates an extra space here. And when I go back to my project data, I can go to the seismic, and I see that we've actually got the Blackfoot seismic and the inversion results. Let's drag the Blackfoot Seismic over to screen 3 and now we have all three screens showing simultaneously. I can get rid of my project manager and make it very easy to see. Um, various manipulations on any one of these screens. I can right click and have complete control. If I do the view, I have the uh, eyeball which allows me to uh, change the parameters in great detail one handy change that I can make is to see this instead of vertically, horizontally, and what we see now is the uh, input model shown on the top, the inversion results shown in the middle, and the seismic, the original seismic data shown down here. But we're almost finished now. Uh, let's go back to the project manager and the workflows. What if we had wanted to modify this? One of the modifications, for example, is we might want to, to have done a check shot application, say, before Correlate the Wells. So I right-click on Correlate the Wells and I say, insert a new process above log processing check shot correction. Now it says it's going to create a new tab called User tab, OK, and it's added check shot correction. This is different from the default workflow. And this is available, for example, I, it's shown red because I haven't applied it. I can right-click and export the workflow and parameters as an ASCII file which can be or an HTML file which can be re-imported later in another project. So this workflow is not only the suggested series of steps, it's the um, 
history file, which can be run separately. So that is the end of my demo. Thank you very much for your attention.